Good morning, Twisties. Welcome, everybody. I'm here with my friend Kat from Why Not Fibers. She's a local Michigan girl. I say local because Michigan is local to me. <laughs> uh, and a good friend of ours. We see her at a lot of the yarn shows we attend uh, here in the in the state and um, around the country. So welcome, Kat. Thank you for being with us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your company? Oh, I'd be happy to do. Um, Why Not Fibers was my brainchild that I started a number of years ago by accident because I had, I was a knitter and then I was like, ooh, shiny spinning wheel. And so I started spinning, well actually on drop spindle then spinning wheel, but then I couldn't find the color that I wanted to spin. And so I ended up dyeing some of my own fiber and it was kind of all over at that point um, because I wanted to dye all the things. I started out with pulling turmeric out of my cupboard and using that because it's what I had on hand. How cool and is that? Okay, go ahead, sorry. No, 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 it's fine. It was awesome. It was this great, like, deep amber, and I even still have a little bit of it because I had, like, tucked it away and it had just been hanging out with stuff. Yeah, I know, isn't that cool? Yeah. So the, the crazy mad scientist beginnings of kitchen dyeing, then fast forward to some other types of natural dyes, including mordants, using greener shades, acid fast dyes, and just getting to play, and that's what I love to do. So that's kind of how it started. Um, and then a couple of years in, my really good friend Claire ended up coming on board as my business partner, and which was gangbuster and just the best thing in the entire world. And that just, things just kind of started getting bigger and bigger at that point because it had two people's ideas and two people's energy behind it. Right. Plus different kind of ABD tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> because we just, we caught it, we called it, um, well, my, my husband used to call Claire my yarn wife, and I told her that, and she goes, no, 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 you're the wifey. And like, oh, you're not wrong. But um, then this last year, it just got very, very challenging for Claire to continue doing two full-time jobs, right. because she does work full-time. And so she had to take a step back where she's still available, and we still collaborate and get to do all the mind stuff, which is so awesome, because she has the sexiest brain. Um, and <laughs> she really does. <laughs> so she really does. She really does. And yeah. it's like, I feel like there's so many things that my husband and Claire actually have in common. And I think that's part of why I was drawn to her in the first place. Also on her own, she's just so cool. And so we got to play with all these things and start doing all of these new things together. Um, and so we're still able to collaborate, but then I was able to kind of pull forward and do a little bit more because I wasn't having to make sure that that we both had enough energy for everything. Right. And you know me, I'm an energetic person. I can't <laughs> um, you also kind of sometimes see the manic side of me where it's like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen any of you for so long. And now I'm really getting that way. But <laughs> yeah, us extroverts are having a bit of a rough time these last couple months, haven't we? Aren't we? We are. I luckily have, mostly luckily, have two smaller extroverts in my house. And so <laughs> Did they help with that too and yeah. my husband was like I'm gonna go and hide for a little while yeah but we respect that because we all have our needs and we're trying to fulfill them exactly so the whole the whole business has kind of come full circle back to being me and my brainchild but with this support structure in place of the people that I get to work with that is so intertwined with everything I do right I collaboration is so important in our business oh. I truly believe we I Meg and I started a uh, um, uh, outreach kind of with some of our friends and we call it our yarn friends right where are, Jean do you know Jean from Destination Yarn mm -hmm. she we, she's worked with us quite a few a bit on some collaborations and we really want we, we really believe that by joining with other companies who do different things but do it so well by combining forces and melding our brains together that kind of collaboration just is it can explode creativity actually i don't know if you know this but um total sidebar here but joel bigelow satel from the bean dips this is only different from what i told you earlier okay she has some of our yarn she has some of your yarn i know and she showed me something this morning really so she and i 
I saw Jill when we were at Stitches West, mm -hmm. um, the very last show that we did before the entire world went into stay home, stay safe okay. mode. Yeah. And um, we had a good conversation, probably about an hour long in that lobby at six o'clock in the morning because we were the only ones awake. And <laughs> and um, and we talked about something like that. So well, that's so cool. I'm glad she kind of ran with it. You're, you're gonna, she's been working on it. She had like worked out a couple of different things because uh -huh. Jill and I actually check in usually once a week because she's one of my main helpers and well, was one of the main helpers in the studio before we had to stay home. Are you guys in the same town? We're not. We're really? about 45 minutes apart. Okay. I thought you were closer than that. We, I was when I was at the studio in okay. town, but now that it's moved to my home, mm -hmm. um, Claire's home, because that was what had to happen in yeah. March. So yeah. we kind of, you know, went, okay, this is happening now, not over the summer, because we were planning a slow move, right. not a day or less. So. Yeah. But Jill has really been really wonderful to work with and really instrumental and kind of like poking at me to be like, hey, did you do the thing? Hey, did you do the thing? And in a way that it's not somebody that I, I collaborate with in the dying process, like with Claire, right. where we can be like, hey, I'm doing this thing, you're doing that thing. With Jill, she's like, just, you know, okay, checking in. I've got this piece. Have you got that piece? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, Right. So that accountability and that collaboration is so great. Accountability is another big one, especially for creative brains. We, you know, I saw a, a meme the other day that was for crafters that oh, no. said, you know, oh, I've got this fantastic idea. I'm getting it started and I'm showing everybody, telling everybody about this idea because it's so good. And then oh, look at that idea. And then you're off to the <laughs> next one but the other ones sometimes get put on the back shelf those other ideas that were fabulous and fantastic ideas they just didn't come to fruition because you had your next one I thought that was so true about creatives especially in our field where we have to be held accountable to complete that circle to complete that circuit it's it's been really good to have that community like you talked about having your yarnies yeah because without that it's like we're doing it for all of us, I dye yarn not just for me, not just for a person that takes it and knits with it, but it's like, oh, I have this idea. I wonder how this would work with it. And then I'll reach out, like, I'll be like, hey, what do you think of this? Yeah. Or I'll reach out to Jill and be like, have idea. Want to do some color work? <laughs> and she's like, always yes. Uh, right. <laughs> again, the brain. And so she does a lot of really cool double knitting. But anyway, so I got, you know, clearly went squirrel on you there, but. Yes, I got to see one of the fun things that Jill is working with, and I'm sure she's going to let you know about it. I and love collaborations. Hey, I'll put a link to Jill's information below this video so you can take a peek. I'm sure she has a website, um, and I know she's got a verbose Ravelry presence, too. So I'll make sure both of those links are, are below. Yeah. She's awesome, and she is just fun. Her patterns are fun. So yeah, they are. That. So anyway, those different things have been happening and Joel and I have been checking in with those and I had some interesting, well, we had another new yarn, another listen to me. I'm like, oh, new toy, new toy, new <laughs> toy. So a couple of months ago, I don't, if you happen to follow us on Instagram, you probably saw a tower of yarn that I put up there. So I probably don't have it in the right order, but here's my tower of yarn. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I'll put a link to her Instagram too. <laughs> it's great. So, lots, of, lots of kitties. <laughs> go ahead, yeah, tower. <laughs> lots of sourdough lately. Oh, oh I did right. That road. I did. I did it. It was awful. And it's awesome. But all right, so I know what that tower of yarn has made because I saw it before we went on camera, but. Should I show? Ah, uh, yes, you got her show. Oh, oh just Here kidding. Me. You're a <laughs> meme. <laughs> uh, so this this yarn, it actually is about the yarn first because this is a, it's a mostly farm to needle yarn where I also had some yak that I had them put into it. And this is a Coopworth alpaca and yak blend. And it's 75% Coopworth. So it, it's pretty rustic, but it's got this like, 
after softness that you don't expect. Yeah. But it's crisp. It was spun at uh, Zeilinger Woolen Mill and Frankenmuth. And they, like, they just busted it out and did a great job. And this is the so cool. Yeah, really Frankenmuth, well Michigan. If you don't know it, look it up. It's pretty cool. <laughs> super cool and they do tours for free so you can go and tour the mill and see the whole process and it's so fun and it smells like sheep okay so splendid is the name of the new yarn and then this uh, the color though look at that chartreuse oh super my gosh magic. i'll put it back on the head so you can see it a little bit better now that pattern is by Jill Bigelow Sattel. Yep, this awesome. was actually what we talked about, and I was her first test knitter for it, and she wrote it with the the splendid, and it is just it's a lovely pattern. It's really quick, and then the top. I mean, I just this top slays me. And it's killer. It looks like a kaleidoscope, right? and it's yeah. so fun and it's so pretty. Um, <laughs> but because, I mean, yeah, I don't. Palette. I have a palette too. I'm wearing it and I've got it behind me and I'm knitting it right here. And <laughs> yes, we do have a palette. So, yeah. but then I want to hear about that sweater because I kind of want to wear it. Okay, I'll tell you about that sweater in a second. We're going to circle back to farm to table. Uh, I said farm to table. That's actually what it's based. Oops, I'm losing earrings. Um, farm to needle because I love the concept and I promise we'll get right back to the sweater but I don't want to forget about farm to needle can you just talk a little bit about that because that's something unique to your brand and I want people to understand what it is well and that's something that I love to do because I get to work with farmers who are raising the animals and right. mostly sheep but also alpaca and we've got a couple other things that are kind of you know working in there but we will buy the fleece in the raw from right. um, farmers and we will, sometimes I'll wash it first, it depends on how many shows we're going to, or I'll just pass it straight on through to a mill. And we've worked with a bunch of different mills in Michigan and we're actually looking at a couple in Illinois and Wisconsin also for a couple of different things. But it's so interesting, like everything else, the mills have, each have their own specialty. Like they have the thing that they're, the thing that they're really good at. The same may be with dyers and designers where they kind of have their own, okay, this is our specialty, right. you know, type of yarn. And so getting to kind of get to know what different mills do means we can customize, okay, we know that their equipment does a little bit more twist right. or more other stuff comes out like, like so, or they have a combing machine that works good with stuff that tries to bounce back on itself and pill. So knowing what we're working with means that we can really send specific fibers to specific places. You and really places. customize. Exactly. And we, yeah. um, we are able to get it from the farmer, which, oh my gosh, we get to go and see the sheepies and the sheepies are so cute. And they're just like, one of the flocks that I get to visit is from Iron Wheel Farm. They're another Michigan crew, and they have fin sheep. And that was actually one of our first farm to needles was a fin and alpaca blend called Smitten because we're corny like that. <laughs> I love, I'm trying to find this, I have a stain right here. It's fun because it's like, yeah. Look at the color on that, you guys. It just takes it. It really so does. Look at, that is that is rich, wash. saturated, yeah. beautiful. That's a hey, that color. might be my color. Oh, what? Oh, wait, hang on a second. <laughs> there we go. Oh, okay. You got my number. <laughs> um, but the, it's not super wash, so it hasn't been treated in any way other than washing and spinning. Right. And the thing we found with that is it takes the dye a little bit differently than super it wash. really really does yeah they're just they have their own little shine and they have so much crimp in them and fin is a really soft against the skin darn which the, i love merino i love merino but I, there's so many other options yeah. it's it, one of my friends described it to me where she said i love merino but it's like i've had vanilla ice cream and i haven't ever tried any other ice cream and I want to try all the flavors of ice cream, and now I want to put chocolate sauce on it. 
Yeah. And I'm like, so we put a small packet in and we do some dyeing with this. So being able to play with the different ones, it really helps expand upon that. So we get to visit the shoes. We get to come home smelling. I come home and I smell like a barn and I'm so happy. And I'm, I'm so happy about it. Yeah. About three days later, I stopped smelling like lanolin and cheap. Yeah. But, and Steve, my husband, bless him. He is so delicate about how he says that I smell. He's like, oh, oh you had food in the barn, barn today? Yeah. <laughs> Can you touch some fleece because your hands are very soft from the lanolin. And I'm like, <laughs> you. I stink, don't I? And it always seems to be that one day like today where it's sunny and like 91 degrees and 80% humidity. Yeah. End up skirting the fleeces. So, which um, skirting is the process of pulling out any of the nasty bits that you don't want to have processed. So if they have poo or nasty, you know, hay or yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, hay they can usually get out, but there's certain parts that just aren't the good parts, and so you just get rid of them. And they can be used for mulch, and they can be composted or whatever. Anyway, so the different farms that we get to work with, and it's again, they each have their specialty because they know their breed of sheep. And like any other animal, a breed of sheep is going to have a specific characteristic for it. Some are more disease resistant in the way they've been raised. Some um, have shorter coats or thinner uh, microns on, the, on the, the hair. So it's really interesting to learn about those. They're all different sizes. I mean, you'll get some huge rams or there's a little itty bitty baby doll sheep. I... I mean, in case you didn't realize, I'm slightly upset with this, and I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Well, I just love the concept, and I think, you know, boy, keeping it all, knowing where it began and knowing where it ended, and then you add your own twist to it, huh, when you dye it up yourself, and it's just, I love the concept. It's fabulous. It's, it's really lovely, and it is based in the farm-to-table concept. Absolutely. You know the whole thing of where you're going. You know the story. It's a yeah. story. It is yeah. a story, and the different farmers and the different mills, and then it comes back to us, and I get to put color on it, and I get to go all the way sometimes where I'm like, let me see. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, here we go. Some that, because I like to dabble in natural dyes, sometimes more right. than dabble, I will admit. So then this guy... Look at that. Ooh, got, look at the texture on that one. What is that base? So this one is unsalted. Mwah, mwah. All of our yarns start with an S except for this one. Yeah. And this is the first one that we did with Cooperth, which was across the, the um, Lake Michigan, the lake, listen to me. <laughs> Michigan I'm from because I'm on that, the west yeah. side. Um, and it, Cooperth is this lovely, lovely, crimped, strong fleece that's actually really soft. And we blended it with 50% alpaca. And so then you've got that strength and that lovely crispness of it. And, and then it's velvet. And it's just a little bit of drape from that. Yeah. So these guys, and then this one, I don't know if you can see, can you see the creamy yellow? Yeah. It's, it's so hard with lights and cameras and things. This one, I really love this one because this is from Willow Trees and Branches that's a quarter of a mile down the road from my house here. Oh, that's so cool. This is bag with Willow. And it's literally, so this, that one is like completely full circle. It did. And when she says willow trees and branches, she's not talking about a company called willow trees and branches. She's talking about the willow trees and the branches that are a quarter mile down the road. I just wanted to make a note. <laughs> and it's, so we had a mordant at first, which is using, uh, we use alum and cream of tartar. And the alum acts like the glue between the dye and the actual fibers. Right. So it's just fun, fun process. I told you my, my story of woe, because um, I love this yarn. Oh, right. And I was up and it along, and I was actually even on par to get done at, at time for our knit along. And then I realized my counting skills were not what they could have been. And I'm totally going to do this because I'm a girl. <laughs> so that's OK. This will tie right into my sweater. <laughs> I was like 10 rows from done and I realized that the front was not the same number of stitches as the back oh oh so I have arm arm warmers I, I'm I'm gonna knit it I'm actually and you had to frog all of that back 
oh, I, I cried. And I have not cried over knitting in ages, but just because it was my own distracted ADD-ness that I'm like, I got it right the first time. <laughs> oh my goodness, I know better. I always know better. Yeah. And then I end up having to do this. And this is going to be my comfy sweater. I mean, like the torso is only this long because my torso is only that long. Yeah. Because short. <laughs> but I, this one is the, the unsalted, that's the Cooper. You can see how this one takes that color too, where it's got yeah. the amber and um, the red is called Red Spire. But it's just so saturated, Kat. Yeah. It's so shiny. It's such a shiny. The Cooper is so, 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 so shiny. And then we go and get to play with it with a little bit of the alpaca and a little bit of the yak. And it gets the halo. Can you see the halo? Yeah. Yep. Got and it. This now, one, that, that pattern is not out yet, correct? No. Jill's pattern? So the plan is... Um, Actually, I'll talk about that when we talk about Fiber World. So, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Sweater. Right, let me tell you about my sweater. This is Passing Showers. Elizabeth Smith is the Ooh. designer. And we have been doing a knit along or a make along on our um, Ravelry page, our Ravelry mm -hmm. group, and it just ended. Um, and then my sweater's not done. I knew that would happen. No. You know what? This is my very first sweater I've ever knit. Ever. Yes. <laughs> I've never knit a sweater before. I just, I, I never thought I could. I've, I've only been knitting for six years. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I started knitting when I joined the company. Because yeah. Meg said, if you're going to work with me, you got to know how to knit. And she basically threw yarn at me and said, come back when you know something. <laughs> I can totally see her doing that. It turned out to be a wonderful thing. I am now as addicted to it as anybody else. But So I'm doing this and it's up here behind me. I did another video today and I was talk, asking people to give me their, um, give me their suggestions. I need to do a, a band that will pick up, up the side, around, and back down the back. So just a band to make it lay nice so it doesn't curl under like this, you know. Uh, and what I didn't realize is that this is our evolution style and the band is going to be solid. So I'll have a stripe depending on what color I do. So I said, do I go with the mar maroon? Do I go with, where is it? <laughs> the purple <laughs> or um, a friend of, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday and she said, what about a little gradient going side to side? So, yeah. <laughs> Kat thinks I should do that. That's her vote. But then she added, what about another gradient, a mini baby right here on each sleeve instead of just the extension of the purple? Hmm. So now look, see a fourth option, you guys. What am I going to do? <laughs> you know what I think. I do know what you think. You are, more evolution is better evolution. Yeah, I, I'm not, um, I don't shy away from the colors. No, no, it's okay. Neither do I. But I'm really excited about this. I'm making it extra long because I want to cover my booty when I'm like at, in a booth wearing my black leggings to stay comfy, mm -hmm. you know, but still be able to have some some yarn on. Um, so I'm going to make it. Fashion plate. Say again? You like fashion plate. Yeah. So fancy. <laughs> So I'm excited. I'm excited about it. So that's what that is. Uh, Passing Showers by Elizabeth Smith. And I'll put a link to that in the notes below. Nice. So I, I am interested to see how you, you finish that one because I might. It'll be done. It'll get done. I am super busy right now between working all the time. As you would know, as a, as a business owner, it kind of doesn't go away, especially when you've got an office in your house. Um, yeah. <laughs> And then school, I'm taking my last class to get my bachelor's. I'm my final one. So I'm doing final that. Bachelor's? I'm sorry? Final bachelor's? Yeah. The final, the final class to get my bachelor. Yeah. Finally. What, what are you studying this time? Well, there's a story. <laughs> okay. Is that for another time then? When I was back in school 20 years ago, 
um, uh-huh. I was a music business double major. I Ooh. wanted I wanted to live in New York City and manage a, 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 a theater or um, I wanted to be on Broadway, but not on Broadway, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wanted to work on Broadway. I wanted to work on Broadway so badly. Oh, that was my ultimate dream. Um, and then life happened and you know, that's just how, and I love my life. I would not change a single thing about it. Um, but along the way, I never finished. I had um, like four or five classes left on my degree. And um, I took one every once in a while as the kids were growing. Um, and I'm fine, I'm down to the last one. But in that time, that combined major is no longer offered through a university. Um, so we, kind of fiddled a few things. I had to take a couple extra classes. So it'll just be a general, a bachelor of uh, general arts. Um, it's a liberal arts degree and, and really the paper is what's important. And that it is done before my children graduate from college is a bonus. <laughs> I, you were my inspiration because I was also a music major once upon a time. I know. And were you performance as well or? was performance and composition. Well, I was liberal arts degree. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, and then I had to get a full-time job. Exactly, like we say, life happens. Life happens, and you know, it taught me a lot about performing, and it taught me a lot about acting people, and maybe someday where I'm like, ooh, before my kids graduate from college, that's a great idea. That was my, my goal, and I have a junior at the University of Michigan this year, so. Um, the clock is ticking. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. That's fantastic. <laughs> so then are you going to do a video of like the walk with the whole? No, probably not. No, no, I probably won't do that. But, um, a FIFA, do you know a FIFA, uh, Saeed from of a yeah. FIFA Knits? Yeah. I spoke with her a couple weeks ago on video just like this. And she said she, we should get Meg to dye me some, um, fabric. In the, in the school colors and evolution, <laughs> and I can just toga style, you know. Totally <laughs> do it. You can rock. It. We'll do sweater. something. Wear it with your sweater. Right. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. So I've been busy. I can't remember what that all led from, but uh, I will get. Oh, I know. I'll get this done eventually. It will happen. It's just it not any time in the next you know, 10 minutes or so. But when it's done, it'll be up on my project page. I'll link to my project page in the in the notes below so you can, you know, watch my progress. And then I can see what you decided to do, which yeah. honestly, any of them are going to be gorgeous. I just have opinions. I know that shocks I, know. I don't, I told, I told the people, the, the, my viewers on my earlier video, I, to, to go and put their opinion in our thread in the Good Morning Twisties thread, and whatever gets the most votes, that's what I'm gonna do. Ooh. So it's, uh, they're in charge. I'm not in charge anymore. I've, I've relinquished my control. Oh, <laughs> because then it's no more decisions. Yeah. I'm just gonna finish up these eyelids, and once they make the choice for me, I will move up. There you go. So We're gonna do a couple shows together. Well, at least one that I know of. Um, even though it's virtual, we're doing the Fiber World 2020. I'm so excited about this. I wasn't able to attend um, the info session on Saturday because I was moving my daughter back to U, U of M, but I'm going to do the one on Thursday. So I'm really excited. These The people who are organizing this are vendors. They're our friends. They're the people who um, do the shows the way that we do them and they know what their customers want and they know what works for vendors. So this is, I'm very in, excited to do this show with uh, five, for Fiber World 2020. Um, and you ha- are kind of on the inside for that. You, I know you and Cal's have been talking quite a bit about getting it all organized. Cal is really the forefront of this and- Yeah, she really is. Yeah, yeah, and the, the the group of video game designers and <laughs> that Cal pulled in, it's just, just really pulled together this crew of really incredible college students and, you know, people in our field and just bringing this together. And the interface, oh my goodness, Beth, the interface is amazing. Okay, having, 
Oh, you're going to love it because it's easy. Yeah. It, this is the thing. It's, it's easy. Now, I'm not just saying this from the vendor side. When I look at it, I'm like, oh, I would voluntarily go and use this interface yeah. as a customer. Oops, I'm not going to have to have the roll on. Um, <laughs> it doesn't take much around here. But the, the landing page for vendors, it has a Zoom thing like this where you get to talk to as if I was a customer, which I am a customer of yours, but <laughs> because you know, yarn. I am too. Yeah. I know. I know. We just kind of trade. It's one of those things. Where I can just, I can talk to you like this and have actual interaction face to face. Right. While I'm, you know, checking out a booth and the, the navigation there is really great. They've got a great team that's answers questions really fast. Mm -hmm. And they're working with each vendor to set up their, uh, their landing page. Yeah. Then there's also going to be a fashion show. There might possibly be a fiber animal pet fashion show. <laughs> I might be trying to get that going. I might have dressed up my cat and sent pictures to Kel and being like, wah, ha, ha. <laughs> so that might, I think it's probably going to happen, which means that people who are not directly involved as vendors are going to be able to send in their favorite, you know, yeah. picture in a sweater or, you know, your muskrat. That they're doing everything right, setting this up. And it's, it's really exciting um, moving forward in this climate and beyond to know that this sort of a setup can work um, and it can be personal. And it can be connection there. Those connections can be made between between the vendors and the customers in a very organic way. Um, I'm very excited about this one. So um, you said there was some news about that hat and fiber roll. Oh, so that lovely splendid hat, the yeah. one that was away from us. Yeah. So we're putting together kits for this because. Yay! Oh, good. I was hoping that's what you were gonna say. <laughs> You know, this hat, you really don't, you don't need this much. This is all the leftovers. Yeah. After, clearly I used about half a skein of this guy. Yeah. But one of the other color, one of the other, co other color, one of the other color combinations, say that 10 times fast. It's a warmer tone where it's got everything from an amber down to those deep reds and, and purpley mm -hmm. reds mm -hmm. that I showed you. So oh, one this. made just for me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> a really fast knit and it's just which I love color work and this was one of those but the floats are really good spaces apart there's um can you see I haven't blocked this yet wow look at that well you're so, good you're not to teach me how to do that okay <laughs> anytime anytime you want we can do it on here and actually Jill is a teacher I know she is and I I'm just, a very good one she is she yeah. is a great teacher she taught me how to do double knitting, which I actually, I can show you that one too. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I love how squishy double knitting is. It's yeah. going to be so warm next year when it's back down. Anyway, so we're putting the kits together so that you don't have to buy five skeins of yarn right. to make a hat. But I also heard that she might be using that as a test to do a sweater. Um, <gasps> Oh, I know. So that's, that's not official yet, but we'll see. Uh, she, that was kind of her, her thought process when she was doing it, but I am in love with the hat so much that I kind of, yeah. I mean, really I have enough yarn to do another one. I love it. I'm going to be doing that. Those ones, I don't know what the price point is going to be on them yet. With them being the farm to needle yarn, the skeins are about $28 a piece on their own. They're okay. the first and alpaca and yak. So it's got that little bit of fuzz in it. Right. So on yarn it's like I said it feels a lot more rustic than you think of when you say yeah but then when you start feeling it you're like oh yeah yeah there it is and I love that about it the crispness and the way that it takes color and the way the color just really plays together so nice I'm excited to be putting together different color combinations which that's really like one of my favorite games is yeah ooh, ooh how many colors should we put in this one which one <laughs> so well, I love that you're doing a kit we are doing our standard um, create a kit, make your own. Here's the pattern. You, uh, it just takes the one evolution to create. So as many patterns as we have available, we can hook you up with a kit for it. Um, and we are going to be offering, if you shop through the 
Library of World 2020 website, um, not directly through our, our interface, through our website. If you go through the Fiber World 2020, you'll get free shipping on all orders of $100 or more, which is not hard to do at our shop. So, um, no, so worth it. Yeah, yeah. And we, we don't do that very often. We very rarely... Um, we do that a couple of times a year tops. So this is a, this is kind of a big deal. Um, I love that. It makes you, it makes everything feel more local when I do that. I'm like, you know what? You're here in my shop. You get free shipping. Yeah. Because it's like, if you get to, if you go to the fiber festival, exactly. And they get to go to the fiber festival and they get to bring it home with them. ish. Exactly. That's kind of what we were thinking. Yeah. I can't wait for you to, to see the interface for the fiber world. I know. I'm excited. I'm going to go on Thursday and, and um, do their do their little info session, and I told I told Meg hold on to her hat because this is going to be a fun ride. It is the most put together I have seen, and yeah. it's like nothing that I have seen in virtual for this. Just yeah. the fact that they are working with people who are video game designers. I think that's everything. really cool. Yeah, she's doing everything. everything right. Yes, absolutely. So thank you, Cal. <laughs> Thank you, Cal. I'm so excited to do your show and to see all my friends. It feels, I mean, it feels like they're right in the booth next door. All of the people I know who are going to be doing the show, it's going to be fantastic, you guys. You've got to go and check out their vendor list. Uh, it's going to be like you know, a mile long, I think. Kat, thank you for joining me. I had a blast, like I always do whenever I talk to you. I wish that Traverse City wasn't so far away from the Lansing area. And we could do this on a more regular basis. We will get there. We will. <laughs> in the meantime, we can just keep doing this because it makes me cool and it makes me hey, feel like I've got Can I mention really quick that um the you do your coffee with cat session? Oh, on Saturdays? On Saturdays on on um Zoom. You do it through the Michigan Makers Together um site on Facebook. It's a really fun time. I've attended a few times. My Saturdays tend to fill up before 10 a.m. quite quickly. <laughs> but whenever you go, it's just a great community, and lots of chatter, some great information. Um, and you don't have to be from Michigan to join. So you don't. And also, put PJs are encouraged. They're not required, but, um, you know, bedhead and everything else is definitely, like, your spot on for the cut for the dress code for that right and do you put out a new link every week for that or is there a standing invitation every time when i try to do the same link that for some reason wasn't working i think that when they change security stuff in zoom but it's just been a fun thing and i did it a few times and i was like well i'll let somebody else do it this time and then i started getting texts from the different folks being like hey are you doing that is there a link and i'm like oh i guess i'm doing this every week <laughs> And that's, it's been great. And it's been an opportunity to know that there, we've got, you know, the people that are able to come every time, which yeah, awesome. And then it's, but it's always rotating through, which is great. I love it. You get to meet new people. It's wonderful. I'll put a link below to the Facebook group. Go ahead and join it. And then you'll be able to get the link to join Coffee with Kat on Saturdays, which is just lovely. Thank you, Kat. And we're going to have to say goodbye. I think we've already gone about 20 minutes past my time limit. <laughs> I don't understand time. So I that's a nice <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I love you, and I'll see you soon, hopefully in person. I love you. Bye, Twisties.